Hello and welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. I'm in Beijing and today I'm going to be trying a traditional Beijing snack. It's the Beijing meat pie. Today I've come to Bao Rui, Mending Rou Bing. It's been selling meat pies among other yummy snacks for over 30 years here in Beijing. At any time of day, this place is fully packed out, people lining up and waiting of upwards 40 minutes to get their meat pie fixed. To say I'm excited about this is an understatement. Us Aussies, we love our meat pies. Flaky pastry on the outside, oozing with gravy and chunks of meat on the inside, topped with a healthy dose of tomato sauce. That's what we call ketchup tomato sauce in Australia. You can probably tell I've been craving meat pies here in Beijing recently. So when I heard that Beijing had a meat pie, obviously I had to come and try it. So here I am at one of the most popular places to get this meat pie in Beijing and it's got an absolutely fascinating origin story. So it's called Mending Rou Bing, which literally translates to door nail meat pie. If you've ever been to the Forbidden City in Beijing, you would have come across doors like these. Wait a second, I'm in Beijing right now. This is no time for a stock photo. Woohoo, greetings from the Forbidden City. Look at me go, <laughs> content. Creation. So as I was saying, if you've been here to Beijing, you would have come across doors like these. Big red doors with gold door nails on them. And they're about the size of my fist. Actually, you can find them all over Old Beijing. They're usually at the entrances to palaces, temples, and big important mansions. And they're there to denote status, a social hierarchy. The more doornails on the door, the more important the person. And as you can tell by these doors behind me here, the person who lived here was very, very important. As important as you can get, in fact, the emperor. So actually all of the gates used by the emperor here in the Forbidden City have 81 nails, nine rows of nine nails. So why the number nine? What is the significance of the number nine? Well, nine is the highest single number, so it symbolized supremacy. So nine was dictated to be the emperor's number for his exclusive use. And actually, if any commoner was seen to be copying this door design with 81 studs, he could actually face execution. There's only one gate in the entire Forbidden City that has a different number of door nails, and that's this one behind me here, Dong Huanmen, the East Prosperity Gate. Instead of having nine rows of nine door nails, it has nine rows of eight door nails, and that's because the Emperor did not use this door right here. This door was used for the lesser royals, the high officials, they would enter and leave through this door here. I also think it's quite funny that it's through these doors that tourists leave the Forbidden City. But that's not the only place you'll find repetition of this number nine here in the Forbidden City. It's everywhere. There's a lot of symbolism here in the Forbidden City. Pretty much everything that you see, every color that it is, every number that it is, will have a meaning. This supreme number nine is also reflected on these roof ridges. Can you see behind me here? There are these little mythical animals that sit on these roof ridges. It's common in Beijing to see these rows of mythical creatures on roof ridges, but it's only on buildings used by the emperor that would have nine of these statues. Only one roof in all of China has more than nine statues and it's actually the building behind me here. It's the Hall of Supreme Harmony. It actually has 10 statues on its roof ridges. It's said that this is because the Hall of Supreme Harmony here is the largest and most important hall in the Forbidden City and it was here that the emperors used to exercise their power. And fun fact, back in the Ming and Qing dynasties, no building in Beijing was allowed to be built higher than this building here to maintain the symbol of the imperial power of this building. But anyway, I think we've drifted very far off topic. Let's get back to the pies. So it's said that these meat pies are actually named after the door nails at the Imperial Palace. And you can kind of see it, right? They're about the same, same size, same shape, even that same golden color. Oh my God, my hands are so oily right now. <laughs> it was originally prepared for Empress Dowager Cixi and she tried it, she loved it so much. She asked the chef, what is this? What is it called? He didn't know, but when he saw these door nails, it came to mind, ah, it is but called a doornail meat pie and thus the Beijing meat pie was born. It's now more than a hundred years since its invention, but the hot juicy filling and light flaky pastry still draw cues at this shop. So this place, it's small, but it's absolutely packed, full of people waiting for their meat pies. 
If you can get a seat, you're lucky. So they're made on mass, and every so often, out from the kitchen, they'll bring out a massive plate of raw pig. How amazing do they look? Oh, this here. Whoa, here we are. So my meat pies have just arrived. They look so beautiful, golden, delicious, slightly charred on the outside. And on the bottom here, there's a little bit of oil swimming around the dish. I guess these are gonna be absolutely full with juiciness. And I heard when it comes to eating these pies, there's an optimal appreciation period. If you go in and eat them too quickly, they're gonna burn your mouth. But if you wait too long, the oil and fattiness inside them are gonna solidify and they become very nice, very not really nice to eat. So we're gonna wait about two to three minutes and then uh, get stuck in. Oh. oh, it smells so good. You know what it smells like? It smells like the, like a really juicy hamburger patty. Okay, that was like the most torturous two minutes of my life. I am foaming at the bit to get in and try these. So I've been told the way to do it is to make a little hole in the in the skin so that you can let out some of its juice because quite like a sheng jian bao or a xiao long bao, it's got juices inside and if you go in too quickly, it'll burn you. So I'm gonna release the juice. So I don't know if this is unorthodox, but I'm actually gonna go in and have a spoonful of this oily juice. Just, you know, gotta try. Wow, super flavorful, very oily. I have this like ring of slipperiness around my mouth right now. So I've made my hole, I've drained it of its oil, I've tried the oil. Now it's time to actually try this meat pie itself. And yeah, I couldn't be more excited. Oh, wow. I probably don't have to say anything. Your mouth is probably just watering at that. That is food porn at its finest. The bottom of it is so deliciously crunchy and crispy. And inside it's this mix of beef and green onion. So it's a super oniony, hearty filling. Don't let the beefness fool you. It is so juicy and just as tender as you get from a pork filling. Mm. It is literally dripping with juice. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I know this is probably not the most graceful way to eat this, but as an Australian, I feel very strongly about eating my pies with my hands. So that's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> Actually looking around, I'm definitely the only one eating it with my hands. Oh, hello, sir. A popular technique seems to be opening the pastry with your chopsticks, eating the meat first, and then enjoying the pastry later. Don't know if I agree with this method, but you do you. So one thing about this doornail meat pie is it is quite fatty, very juicy, and I think it needs something to cut through that grease. So I'm gonna put on a little bit of vinegar that they've supplied here on the table, and also a bit of chili as well. You know, in Australia, we put tomato sauce, but here in China, we're gonna go with the vinegar and the chili. Let's give that a try with the chili and vinegar. Oh yeah, that is so freaking good. Like it was fine without the vinegar and the chili, but the addition of it really just takes it to that next level. The vinegar cuts through the grease, gives it that zappiness, and then the chili, well, you know, chili. It's, you know, you know what chili does. <laughs> and when I add that vinegar, I'm really reminded of a Shanghai Sheng Jian Bao, the pan fried dumpling because you've got that hard bottom, the juicy filling, the meat on the inside, that slight onioniness, and with the vinegar. Yeah, it, it's giving me a similar vibe. Mm. Oh, I love that so much. And a note for those of you planning to eat this with your hands, bring tissues. So for all the people out there that say that Beijing is a food desert, Beijing may not do me Try this. And then tell me that Beijing has no good food. <laughs>